Hello, I'm Paulina Chin of MapleSoft. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about the new dataplot command, which was introduced in Maple 2015. The dataplot command is a top-level command similar to the plot and plot 3D commands, but designed for plotting datasets. Like the plot and plot 3D commands, it was designed to be easy to use and flexible. It accepts data in different formats and produces a variety of plots. Here are a few examples I'm going to go through very shortly, um, just to show you how easy it is to create data plots. Later in this webinar, I'll be giving you more information about the calling sequences and options you can use to customize the look of the plot. Of course, you can always go to the data plot help page to get the full details of this command. Okay, let me start by defining a vector of x values here, followed by several vectors of y values. Now we can create a plot with these data sets. You can also create surfaces easily, shown by our next example. Here I define a matrix and I plot the values in the matrix as a surface. And other types of plots are available, such as this bar chart here. Let's now take a closer look at 2D point plots. First, I'm going to go to the data plot help page. As you can see, there are four different calling sequences for this command. The very first one is the one that we'll cover in this section. Okay, I'm just going to redefine the um, vectors x, y1, y2, and y3 that I had defined earlier. The first example is the simplest kind of point plot you can have, and that's the, um, the y values plot against these x values defined above. And you just give the x vector and the y vector, and you're done. This next plot, which you had seen earlier, allows several vectors of y values provided in the list. And this is plotted against a single vector of x values. Note that I had defined um, uh, all the data in vectors, but you can just as easily use a list or a one-dimensional array of values. It's not restricted to the vector data type. This next plot shows how we can use the animation option to animate the drawing of the plots. And some of you may be familiar with the animate curve um, command, which is in the plots package. So this, um, this animation option does pretty much a similar thing, but with data sets instead of with um, curves uh, generated from expressions. Now note in the previous data plot, this one here, how colors are automatically assigned to each of the curves. Let's talk about colors and symbols here in this next section. These are very easy to change using the different options that are available with Dataplot. In this example, we give a single color navy blue. When that happens, Dataplot automatically assigns different symbols to each plot to distinguish them. If that's not what you want, then you can easily override this um, uh, automatic assignment of symbols by just specifying the symbol that you actually want, solid box in this case. You can also use the color scheme option with the data plot command to apply a color scheme to the entire set of points. For more information about this option, which can be used with um, a number of different plotting commands, you can look at the plot color scheme help page 
or you can view our video on how to use color schemes with plots, which we had posted on March 4th, 2015. Finally, there is a color palette option that changes the set of default colors, which the data plot command uses for assigning colors to data sets. Any of the palettes provided by the color tools package can be used. So here we used one called Spring. You can view the palettes um, themselves and see what's available by using the color tools palette names command and then um, applying the get palette command to anyone that uh, you might be interested in seeing. Now uh, notice one other thing about this last example. I was able to get the points without the connecting lines by using the style equals point option. We'll next look at how to generate 3D surfaces with the data plot command. This is the second calling sequence on the data plot help page that we'll be using. So this one right here. So first, we'll define a 25 by 25 matrix of values. And to plot a surface, all you have to do is provide the X range the Y range, and the matrix of values. And here we have our surface. Uh, notice that the points are evenly distributed in the X and Y directions. You can also specify the exact X and Y values um, that correspond to the, to the Z values given in your matrix. Um, and you do this by giving a vector as either the first or the second argument. So um, in this next example, we use the same vector of values for the um, x values and the y values. And you can see by the surface that they're distributed, um, the points are distri distributed a little bit differently. Now let's go back to the data plot help page for a moment. Uh, the third calling sequence deals with data generated via the datasets package, and we'll see an example of that later on. Um, the fourth calling sequence is a more general one, and that's the one I want to talk about in this next section. This one allows us to generate a greater variety of plots. It also lets us create 2D point plots and 3D surfaces as before, but with a slightly different calling sequence. So this calling sequence takes single matrix, array, or list of list structure, and it's optionally followed by a name specifying the type of plot that's requested. In this first example, we get the same X versus Y plot we saw earlier. However, notice that the X and Y values are put together in a single matrix, and the points name is added, indicating that we want the data to be interpreted as X and Y coordinates. In this next example, we again have two, um, a matrix with two columns, and uh, instead we have two sets of Y values to be plotted against um, evenly distributed X values that are chosen by data plot we use the name values to distinguish this kind of plot from the points plot that's above. Note that the earlier calling sequence we, we talked about at the very beginning of this webinar is the one that you need to use if you want um, X values that are not evenly distributed and automatically chosen. So, what is the advantage of using this calling sequence over the previous one? Well, it allows you to change the plot type easily by simply changing the value of um, this second parameter. So for instance, you can see how this data would look as a bar chart instead of um, as connected points. Now, this next example shows how to plot surface with this calling sequence. 
And um, notice that you have to give the name surface as the second argument, because otherwise, data plot um, interprets the matrix as multiple sets of y values uh, for a 2D plot as the default. And of course, you can use all the regular uh, options that you can with um, other plot commands like color and transparency. These next two examples simply show that data plot can accept a variety of data types. So you, it can take arrays, vectors, matrices, lists, and various combinations of these. I should mention that if you have an extremely large data set, it is always best to store it in an R table, that is an array, vector, or matrix, with the data type set to float 8. And this is what I had done earlier um, in, in um, defining my vectors and matrices. The plotting commands are most efficient with this kind of data. However, if you have um, small data sets, then it's fine to provide any kind of data type and the plotting commands will just convert those to the ones that it, it must use internally. In this final section, we'll take a look at the other types of plots that can be created using the data plot command. These first two plots show a contour plot and a density plot created from the same data we used earlier to uh, plot a 3D surface that's saved in this matrix. The next few plots show plots that are also available through the statistics package. A box plot, an area chart, and 2D and 3D versions of a pie chart. If you want the full range of features available with any of these plots, it's recommended that you use the statistics commands directly. However, if you want to generate any of these plots quickly and easily with the default options, then Dataplot offers that convenience. So notice that any additional options, such as the um, deciles option here that I used with a box plot, get passed directly to the underlying command that data plot calls. And um, on the data plot help page, the underlying command that is used to create the plot is listed here next to the plot type, so that you can refer to um, that help page for more details about the command and uh, about the different options and features that are available. Our final example here shows how Dataplot works with time series data from the datasets package. Here we're plotting population data from a Quandl dataset. So this concludes our webinar about the data plot command. Thank you for joining us.